Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. On today's video, I am inspired to work on some things in my daughter Hadley's room. She has now been gone almost a week to Scouts Camp and it has been hard on all of us. It is so strange without our middle child around. She is, there's just something missing. The other part of it is she is the kid that's allergic to so many foods, peanuts, tree nuts, sesame, eggs, bean, peas, garlic, and onion. I know, it's a lot. It's hard to cook around here. But do you know what's even harder? Is sending her off and trusting other people to cook and keep her safe. But I am excited to say we keep getting these pictures, especially of her holding food. She is completely safe and she's having a blast. But her being gone motivated me to work on some stuff in her room to kind of connect with her while she's gone. So if you want to see how these projects turned out, stick around. The first project today is going to be for Hadley's room and it's something I thrifted a while back and I had in my head that I wanted to be for her little fairy garden in her room. I spent $10 on it because it was for her, I knew I wasn't gonna resell it, but it's just been sitting there waiting to get finished. All I'm gonna do to this guy is do two coats of DIY paint in the color White Swan right over this metal. And you guys, I can get it on the glass. It's an easy cleanup because it is uh, wipeable until it is sealed. That is the great part about this clay-based paint. You can wet distress it. You can wipe it right off of the glass until you seal it. So I did two coats of this and then I used a baby wipe to wet distress it and see the fun details of this butterfly on the top coming through. I just love how this looked. It's exactly how I imagined it when I bought it a long time ago. I just wish I did not have it on the two be upcycled pile for so long. It feels so great to finally get some stuff done and I can't wait till she comes back from camp and um, I get to see what she thinks about it. I did seal this with Big Top. Then I transferred the stuff she already had in her other garden and now it's ready for her to update and make whatever she wants it to be. The next project was my oldest Piper's idea. She had made Hadley a blanket for her birthday last November and thought I should make something to display it. So I went in my stash and had these gross spindles. They were obviously salvaged. Just sprayed them with some of that Dawn Power Wash stuff and the stuff just cleaned right off. So I found three that were the same and two that were the same and decided to do um, an every other spindle pattern. And I'm gonna cut them all to the same size with my chop saw. And I just happened to have those pieces of wood for the side. So now that these are all cleaned, I'm just gonna do two coats on these brown spindles and only one coat on the cream ones. They were covered in paint already and I figured I could distress it well and show some of the stuff underneath. Then wet distress them so that it had some age to it and went over the spindles with Big Top. 
and I'm really happy with this old look that they have, but by painting all of the spindles white, it made it seem like they went together. Next, I wanted these side wood rails to have a wood look to them, and I wanted it to be like a weathered wood look, and I'm trying to go with whatever stain I had in my stash, and this weathered gray just did not do anything. Then I went for like this more American walnut look and I was like oh my gosh this is so orangey this is not what I had in mind but once I started I needed to do them all so at least be the same and I was like okay let's just have this be a base color and then I will figure something out look how that was not the color I was going for but then I remembered I had old and gray which is a liquid patina from DIY and I just took it and I, it's, I almost used it like a glaze. I put it over the top of that orangey wood. I just used a chip brush. There were a little bit of brush marks, which made it look like it was like a barn wood look to it. And guys, this is exactly the look I was going for. So I laid it all out after everything was dry and got out my wood glue. Wood glue is the strength that is going to hold this together. When I do the brad nails, that is just going to keep it until this wood glue really cures. So I measure from the top. I think I did eight and a half inches, just made sure that they were even on each side, had wood glue, to fully have contact then use my brad nailer notice that my hand is nowhere near where the nail is going in guys this is where you know a lot of people have said that they have made some errors so excuse the angle but i wanted to make sure that it was exactly right i went to the other side and there we go i did the top and bottom rungs the same distance from the end and then just did the center one halfway through and measured it out. And I'm really happy with how this turned out in her room. What do you guys think? Is this something you might do for your own space? This next project, I started like I was doing it for Hadley's room, and then it spoke to me and told me what it wanted to be. It needed the new IOD paint inlays on it, and that didn't really go with Hadley's room. So it started for her space, but it, it needed to become what it needed to become. Am I right? Do you guys ever have that problem where you're like, I can't help it this while I'm in the middle of it? I, I've decided it has spoken to me and I know what it needs to be. So first thing I'm doing is sanding off this painted on duck situation. And then I went over the top with Salvation Solution. Hindsight, I should have just done the whole box like this. These homemade type pieces where the stain can very much come through. Gosh, hindsight, mm. Should have just done it. I planned on working smarter and not harder, and this project did not turn out that way. So I did one coat of White Swan on the top, let it dry completely before I did the paint inlay. And then when it's time for the paint inlay, you want there to be a fresh coat of relatively thick paint not too thick, not too thin, you know, just right, of a nice amount of very wet paint because the paint inlay is actually paint and you want it to meld with the paint on your project. So I made sure I got a nice even layer of white swan and then I 
spritz the inside or the paint side of the inlay, laid it down, use my fingers to make sure everything adhered very well, and just kind of rubbed in the paint inlay to the paint on the project so that as it dried, they became together and one. So after I have rubbed it in, I spritz it again, make sure that there's no standing water up there, and then just let it dry completely before I come back for the next step. This should have been my first clue. Do you see how it is kind of yellowed under the paper? Should have done the stain blocker there. So I'm coming back to the top after it's completely dried. I am spraying it down with my mister. Just kind of rubbing it in again with a rag to, again, make sure that these are melded into one. And then I do the very fun and surprising every time. You never know how these things are going to react, but it's very fun to peel back the paper and look at the final project. Oh, look how beautiful this is, guys. There is a little pull there on the top, but it is what it is. Every project is going to be unique and I just love how this looks. Now for the bottom, when I peeled it off, I was so just sure that it was gonna be completely yellow underneath. It was not, but the yellowing happened after I put the big top on it. So this surprised me. I'm like, well, maybe this won't bleed through after all, but there's a space where the paper wasn't and obviously when you have a piece of paper sitting and drying on paint and then some sections that you don't there is going to be a little bit of a texture difference so this is something that is a learning process for me i'm just trying to distress around those edges to make it not so obvious where the paper was and where it wasn't so this is a learning process and i just didn't want there to be an obvious rectangle spot where the inlay paper was and just try to blend it all together if that makes sense so I'm doing big top over it just one big chunky amount so that I'm not dragging paint because it will reactivate um, hindsight on this one I think I am going to be a let's spray it with a clear spray paint this made me very nervous <laughs> for it was such a process and I'm like all it takes is for me to drag one too many times and then there's some blue pulling through so moving forward in this project I'm gonna do it all the same so it has a similar look but moving forward I will be doing just the spray just just to make sure I don't mess it up so if you're nervous about it at all just get a, a clear rust-oleum spray paint to just do for the first time you can see right there I pulled a little bit of that blue it was still wet so I could kind of make sure it wasn't too smeary but learn from my I didn't work as smart on this project and use your stain blocker and use a clear coat for the top coat so that this project is turns out with its full potential I do take this back down all the yellowing parts I just went over the whole bottom piece with the stain blocker and I'm gonna repaint it white and do the inlay again on the front part I, I want this guy to turn out as a showstopper and a yellow trunk will not do that so doing the work so that it's a good project 
what you guys think of this final result. This next project was inspired by my little Hadley. She likes to find these little things and display them and just make them be precious. So I grabbed these two items that I thrifted. They were each thrifted for a dollar and I'm going to marry them together to make a little cloche. This was just the end of a spindle that I had cut with my saw. And because there is a fresh cut mark, I'm adding some Waverly Antiquing Wax. I still have some of this that I need to finish up. And I just go over the whole thing with the wax and wipe it back so that there is not a fresh cut look. Then I used E6000 glue, put something heavy on it, let it sit overnight, and it is now a beautiful married cloche. Every one of these little made cloches that I put in my booth have sold. So if Hadley doesn't want it, I'll sell it. If she wants it, I will let her display something fun in it. This is just a quick and easy marrying up of stuff and making something super fun. This next project is one of those things that I had painted and it was on my workspace. I don't know, let's just say for weeks. And I wanted to finish it and either put it on my back porch or put it in my booth. I thrifted this and broke the top off, used some E6000 overnight to just put that on there. Painted it with aviary. Guys, I am loving this aviary green for summer. It's just such a beautiful color. So I did two coats of this and then used a, a wet wipe to wet distress so that the metal leaves could totally just shine and it looks so much better like this. So two coats of paint, wet distressed, went over it with a big top and what a great upcycle. And this project is finished and it can go off of my workspace. It feels good to get stuff done.
what did you guys think? Did you guys have a favorite project for Hadley's little space this week? I cannot wait until Saturday when she comes home and she sees the stuff that we did to show her that we were thinking about her while she was gone. It was nice to get some stuff done. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. If you guys are new here, I would love it if you would hit subscribe and join the Create Your Own Cozy family and hit that notification bell to all so you get updated, updated every time I upload a new video. Guys, one of the most, one of the comments that I received most last week was how much you love my curly hair. It has been so rainy here this week that this is all a girl can do. This is my natural state. So um, thank you for encouraging um, my natural state of my hair. You guys know you always want something that you don't have. So I've always wanted straight, smooth hair. So it was really cool to hear all the comments about my curly hair. Last weekend, um, after we finished on last week's video, I updated a dresser for my husband's closet. And that's kind of what inspired um, working in Hadley's room this week because it's kind of like if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give Heather a new dresser for her master closet, then she's gonna need to take that desk and move it down to her create room. And then that desk is going to move into Hadley's room, but Hadley's room needs to move a dresser over here, have a new desk, take the armoire from her room, move it to her sister's Piper's room. We just had musical furniture around this house. Does anyone else do that? When a new piece comes in, you've got a whole shuffle of how you want things to end up. Well, that is what we did. And the, the fun part of all that movement, it caused us to create order every single space that we touched. So, you know, it's a win-win. We had to go through things. We had to clean it out. We had to make the space um, full of order. So that is what started the little project in Hadley's room. And I'm excited to make it feel a little bit more cozy for her when she comes home. I am thankful that you guys are all here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.